In the last video, I used this join to pair each customer with their orders. Generally, I do not use a join, nor need you need to use a join. Say that ten times. Anyway, not necessary with the entity framework, because the entity framework handles mapping which customers have which orders for you. Let me show you back in our entities class here we have our customer and our order and all the information we've been dealing with in several videos prior to this one and then the information we dealt with in the last video let me draw one customer all right this is one customer i noticed the first customer that tends to come up is a girl named maria i just met a girl named maria what, what movie is that from? In fact, here, let me sing it for you. Maria, I just met a girl named Maria. Tell me the movie that's in. First comment wins on this video. Anyway, this is Maria. She's made, I believe, six orders. So here are all of Maria's orders. One, two, three, four, five, and then six is the bottom row. I want to tie Maria to her orders. I don't want to use the join to do that. The entity framework will do it for us. Each customer, this is one customer here, each customer has many orders. Right? One instance of customer maps to many instances of order. So all we have to say is public list order orders get set. And then the entity framework realizes, oh, okay, we have a list of order. The entity framework uses reflection in a major way. Go watch my reflection videos if you want to learn more about that. But essentially, by using the convention here, naming this orders and having it to be a list of orders, the entity framework is smart enough to realize, okay, one of these maps to several, that's why it's a list, several of these things. Okay, now what if I have an order object and I want to go the other way? Say I have uh, this order object right here, and I want to know which customer made this order. Okay, I want to navigate back to the, the customer. Well, that's probably why these are called navigation properties. It's simple. Public customer. Customer. That's kind of interesting. I have a type name, name the property name, but that's okay. Get set. And I'll erase this. The Entity Framework will say, oh, okay, you want to know what customer goes with this order? All right, I know to link these both by their customer ID. The Entity Framework is pretty sophisticated and says, oh, you have a customer ID property here, and you have a customer ID property here, and this is a one-to-many relationship, or maybe a many to one, either way you want to look at that. And so just by using these names on these properties, the entity framework will figure out what goes to what. Let's let's use these properties now that we've we've added this and we've added this. I no longer want to do the join over here in main class. Uh, instead, let's say console right line, add, add a little white space there, or black space, I guess, in a console. And then var Maria gets db.customers.first. All right, console right line, let's write out Maria's dot contact name. And then now I want to navigate through all of Maria's orders. So for each, each order, O in Maria, hey, let, tell me about all of your orders. We now have this nice navigational property. Uh, then what were we writing up here? We were writing the order date. CW, O dot order date. Let's just tab this in a little bit for readability. And plus sign there, control L, control F5, build and run this. We see our old way of joining each customer to their orders. That's the result we have from all of this. Okay, I'll just tie that together like so. And then down here we say, hey, Maria Anders, we navigated to all of her orders. We navigated to all of her orders using this dot now. So that's quite nice. This second approach here maps to this. Output. So there you go. That is a join versus navigation properties. Most of the time I'm using navigation properties. Once in a while I want to join one entity set to another entity set based on a property that they're not foreign keyed to. In this case, we're foreign keyed on the customer ID. Again, here is the customer ID, which is foreign keyed to this customer ID right here. If you want to learn about foreign keys and subsets and all that stuff, go watch my SQL videos. But that's the basic gist. We have customer ID as a foreign key to this customer ID. Using the navigation properties, we can make that happen. This is not an entity framework playlist, but I did want to point that out since we're talking about join and link. We're going to get back to 
uh, link in the next video.